Господи Иисусе Христе, Сыне Божий, помилуй нас. Аминь. Все братья и сестры, отцы духовные, которые здесь присутствуют, поздравляем всех вас сегодня с четвертой неделе поста. This is my third presentation on the topic of one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We've been very fortunate. Well, I don't know, I don't know about the fortunate part. All I can say is that we really rattled a lot of cages. And um, just a few days ago, I, I received a few emails that I read through, which I, wouldn't, I didn't want to read them because I wanted to concentrate on my fasting and getting prepared for this presentation. But anyway, the priestess are claiming that our church comes from Antichrist. Ooh. Yes, it's, yeah. in, it's in their emails. Yes. It is in their emails. So, I think uh, my one of my presentations I said that uh, that we're bash uh, that I'm not trying to bash them. What I'm trying to do is just really open up everybody's eyes, especially my parishioners, so that they will understand what is the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. The Lord promised when he was on earth, he promised that the gates of hell will not overcome the church. The church is alive and in, if uh, the way the priest is, they interpret that, they say that the church died and Lord is a weakling because he could not keep his word so that the church will be till the end of times. Of course, uh, that's their misinterpretation or that's their corrupted way of interpreting things. In one of those emails it said, yes, we believe that uh, the gates of hell will not prevail over the church. But, but, they always use this word, but our circumstances are different. Because they are whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm not going to concentrate on, at a later time, I am going to address this uh, question. But today, uh, I just want to bring out and uh, bring out and educate everybody, especially my parishioners, what is the one holy Catholic and apostolic church? <coughs> you probably read, read about this, that uh, on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down on the Lord's disciples and his uh, apostles. <coughs> That's where the church actually start, started with the descent of the Holy Spirit on the Lord's disciples. Then they went forth and they, they preached and um, they ordained. They ordained. They started off with bishops. It's written right there in the Acts of the Apostles. And Apostle Paul writes it in his uh, epistles also. They ordained bishops, priests, and deacons. But they didn't ordain a priestless minister. Isn't that very interesting? Yet they claim to be the priestless, they claim to be the one true church. As a matter of, just for your info, I just want to say this that the priestless sect or cult, whatever you want to call it, it only started about um, 300 years ago. Uh, well, in the late 1600s, uh, beginning of uh, 1700s, because Russia is so vast and big in some places, it started earlier, so in some places it started later. But we're just going to use a, a round figure of about 18, uh, or the beginning of the 17, uh, 1700 as a basis for when uh, the priestless sect, cult, whatever you want to call it, started. But until that time, it was the one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. 
And of course, the Lord Jesus Christ, he said that the gates of hell will not prevail over the church. And then another, uh, at the end of Matthew, in the Gospel of Matthew, he goes, uh, that I will be with you through all times until the end. Until, uh, until the end of times. I say, as a swami yesma, o sagni, dos konjani, e veka, amin. Lord's words have they they have significance and uh, we should not take them lightly. That's why there is the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I'm going to get into detail of what what what, what is going to take to be ordained a deacon because this is where it actually starts. To be a deacon, one one is supposed to be blessed to be a candle carrier which we have in our church. You guys see the little guys uh, in their gowns in the They are candle carriers. The bishop, he blesses them outside the altar. He blesses them in, in the middle of the church. Next comes the, the stepping, the rank of reader. On the sixth hour, he's, uh, he's blessed. A reader, what he does is uh, he's uh, blessed to read the epistle and uh, first amongst those that do the church, that do, that do reading in church. That is their function. The third rank is Ipodiakon uh, or under deacon. He already begins to serve inside the altar of opening and closing the, the curtain, Zavisa. The, Zayas, uh, the curtain comes from the Old Testament where uh, the Holy of Holies was uh, covered by a, uh, a curtain. In order to hold any of these ranks, the children need to be clean. They need to be clean, they need to be clean in the sense of that uh, they should not be, they should be virgins. They should not be uh, soiled or spoiled. Next rank, and all, all these three steps, all these three ranks, they're blessed outside the altar in the middle of the church. The next rank going along is the deacon. Of course, you know, we just recently had uh, uh, a deacon ordained in our church. We went through the process of electing one, asking the bishop to come and uh, ordain him. But the first three ranks, they're not called ordination because they are just blessed because they're outside the altar. But inside the altar, that's called ordination. And that's the first rank that, uh, uh, of the three ranks in the Orthodox Church, which is bishops, uh, priests, and deacons. That's the first rank is a deacon. Something about uh, the deacon's uh, uh, vestments. As we, as I have shown, that even in the Old Testament, there was vestments uh, of the clergy in the Old Testament church. Same with the New Testament church. Uh, to serve, you have to be ablachone, you have to be vested. For a deacon, this tichai, this, this can be any color according to, uh, to the holiday, like mostly for blue. We wear on Bohrodishne Prasniki for the Mother of God. Uh, red, um, we, uh, for, for um, holy hierarchs, Muchiniki uh, martyrs, and uh, white, Napasku Narajaspo. Navaznesenia, Navaznesenia, it's not true. But uh, on Troyes, sometimes we, we, can, we wear green is because uh, the uh, church is um, adorned uh, uh, in all greenery. The deacon's uh, oblachenia can be any color. He also wears cuffs. He, was, he wears cuffs. Any uh, ordained person needs to wear cuffs because w without these cuffs, we cannot touch the holy table. 
or any of the holy uh, uh, any of the Vessels, yeah, thank you. Vessels or anything that is holy in the altar, we cannot touch with bare hands. We need to be cuffed. And then at the same time, the deacon has a oral. This, this oral is, uh, he's a messenger because that's the job of a deacon, is because that's why he's always in church saying, Miram Hospital for Moni Misiritam. Baki, Baki, and you know, because he, he calls people to prayer. He's his messenger. He's uh, uh, but he calls people to pray. A deacon cannot vest up without the blessing either of a priest or a bishop. If there's no, if there's no uh, priest or bishop, deacon cannot vest up. Because for every uh, for uh, every vesting that uh, that he does, he needs to be he needs to get a blessing. Next is the priest. The priest always the uh, white stichar. It has to be white. The reason for that is is because it re resembles that uh, the clothing that we put on um, after we are baptized, we put on white clothing for purity. So that's why the stikhar is always white. And of course we have the, uh, the belt because we are, we're supposed to be girded for any uh, anything that we do in church or we are doing God's work so we need to gird ourselves. And same thing with the cuffs. Priest also wears cuffs because without this, he cannot serve. Like for, for me right now, you know, I'm a priest, but I can't serve. But all I can do is somebody is and simple, simple, but nothing. I can't, uh, I can't sense. I can't do no uh, church services without vesting up. The belt is, uh, it has chitiri uh, yenter. That, that's in, re, re, uh, um, in remembrance of the four Gospels that we follow. And then the top is called Philon, or the top garment that we put on. That resembles the cloak that uh, Roman soldiers put on, uh, on Jesus Christ when they were torturing him and before they brought him to uh, Pontius Pilate. Uh, it is said there in the gospel that he was, he was cloaked in a red uh, uh, red cloak and was brought up before the people. So that's what this top part is for, or that's what it resembles. Bishop is also dressed just like the just like a priest, except in addition to that he has nabiatrinik, this little. Uh, my Bedernik is uh, uh, a resemblance of, because a bishop is a, uh, he, see, he sows good seed. And this is his pouch for, uh, for sowing good seed. Sowing the gospel of, uh, of truth uh, or teaching. Then he has the uh, sapos, which is, well, a priest has a philoen, a bishop has a sapos. That's a that's a Greek word. And then he has the amophorion. This is a, this is a long amophorion that Ludica wears. There's a long one and there's a short one. A short one is when we are doing liturgy and before consecrating gifts, uh, he puts on the short uh, amophorion. This Amaphorian resemble, uh, it's, well, I don't, I don't know if the right word is resemblance. Represent. Represents, represents, thank you. Uh, that uh, him being as a shepherder, he takes the, 
uh, lost sheep on his uh, on his neck, and he brings it home to to father to to, uh, to the church to his father. So this is what the Psalm 40 means: is a lost sheep, and we're all lost sheep before the face of God. The bishop, he has all the qualities. I mean, the qualities of what the church needs, because everything goes through the bishop. Everything is concentrated by the bishop. Uh, he ordains, he blesses the, the holy tables, and uh, when, it, if it, uh, when it comes to cook uh, charisma or miro, only bishops cook the charism. Priests are not even in attendance. The uh, holy charism is made out of olive oil and plus 40 different herbs in essences. As uh, the disciple of John the theolo theologian, the writer of uh, the Holy Gospel, he writes that if there is no bishop, then there is no church. Or no church can exist without a bishop. Because he is the full blessing. He is the full package. He represents uh, uh, the rank of the apostles when the Holy Spirit came down on them. Oh, and plus, the bishop is also a monk. Early on in the church, um, there was uh, uh, bishops that were permitted, uh, by the early church, they were permitted to be married. But after the first ecumenical council, um, the fathers thought it was best that if the bishops would be from the uh, from the rank of monks, because that way they have more time to uh, pay attention to the church and the church's needs, instead of having a wife and family and uh, and uh, everything like that to worry about the family. So it was decided by the councils that um, bishops be from the from the rank of monks. Priest can be married. If he's not married, then he's called a a monk priest. This is what this is what the church taught from day one until this day, and as the Lord said, it's going to be there till the end of times. Like I said before, I don't, uh, well, I do have a dog in the fight about the priest list. It's because they are distorting everything, everything about the church. Everything about what the church actually stands for, they are distorting it. I know I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> it's the 21st century. <clears throat> that? Oh, that's true. Uh -huh. He's a fraudulent uh, minister, he's a fraudulent priest. He's an imposter because he says that he's all of this, and he's not. He's a deceiver because he's he's teaching he's teaching that uh, the priestless have the whole full package they are the uh, the Orthodox Church which they are not that's why he's a liar also because of uh, 40 years ago I myself I was a priestless. This is the way it was 40 years ago, as I recall, that uh, usually whenever the time came for them to change uh, leadership. So the old, pre uh, the, the one that was, that was serving the priestess minister, he would go before the people, Pamalitsa Tripagona, Prastilsa Pamalitsa Zdalkulichi, 
and that's it. Just a second ago, he was almighty, like a bishop rank or priest uh, rank, and boom, the three paklonam, he's playing Joe. Playing Joe. And then, the ones that they elected, he usually went and prayed, see me in that child, seven vows. And boom, from you know, like uh, simple Joe, he becomes big Joe. He's got the rank of priest, bishop, patriarch. It's reality. I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. Because uh, a lot of us uh, have come from the priest list. You guys know that. Uh, yes, to them it's going to hurt. I'm an eighth grade dropout. I never saw the inside of a university or a college. So I don't have, uh, I don't have skills in talking. Or, or putting things in a very good uh, in a very good way. I'm an eighth grade dropout, and from there on, I went to work at a nursery. Where I went to work up in, up in the mountains, uh, cutting down trees. Then did some drywall. Then became a farmer, and now I'm a priest. So I don't have much schooling. The only schooling that I do have is only by the grace of God and God's wisdom. That's all. And uh, I call oranges oranges, apples apples, bananas bananas. And a deacon is a deacon. A priest is a priest. A bishop is a bishop. Simple. This guy is an imposter. That's why their sect or their cult has no salvation. There's only salvation in the church. Yes, I know some of you guys are chuckling. Probably I signed my death warrant, but it's okay. They claim to bring salvation to their people. I want you guys all to see how deceiving they are. They were not only deceiving today, this cult started, or uh, their faith started in, uh, in the beginning of the 1700s. It's over, it's, it's over uh, uh, 300 years old. And the fathers of the priest list sect they started it, and they were, they're fraudulent, number one, imposters, and they've been deceiving and deceiving people and lying to everybody else. That's why to, uh, today, they, uh, they twist things around. Just a little while ago, I was talking about, they claim to be, the, to, they claim to be the church. They have no church. Physically, physically walk in. I mean, there's so many churches throughout the whole world, you know, so because of, we are of Russian descent. Uh, I've been to Russia a few times. I've been to Romania. I've been to uh, uh, Greece. Uh, Holy Land on Mount Athos, every church has an altar. Every church has an altar, Orthodox church that is. They call themselves Orthodox, where is their altar? Just by looking, you can see that they are fraudulent. And yes, they have been very cunning at what, uh, what they have done. I mean, what they're doing, uh, they, what they are doing. Some of our faithful have decided to join them. 
one of them my daughter and I have nephews and nieces that have joined them that sin is very great their sin is very great they have betrayed the true church and joined a fake church yes some some people may get upset but I say that they are traitors traitors and they're full full blown they have betrayed their holy baptism they have betrayed their holy chrismation and above all above all they have betrayed our Lord God Jesus Christ and his most precious and salvific body and blood that they have been receiving in the church God forbid that they pass away without repenting they'll be playing checkers with Judas the father of all the traitors being an apostate and being a traitor is not uh, uh, not the same sin as going to the store and stealing candy something that they need to be worried about something that hurts my heart my soul because uh, I have relatives they're my, they're my nephews and nieces and daughter and it hurts me to the core and some of our parishioners are even um, I don't know how can I say how can I say this lightly but they are preaching against our church right now during uh, Holy Theophany some of our uh, previous um, parishioners they would talk oh yeah partake of the water partake of the water it's salvific it's salvific it's salvific you, you know you get spasenia through uh, their water but water is so diluted so diluted has been diluted, diluted decades and decades and maybe even hundreds of years uh, old it's diluted they don't bless waters they dilute waters and when that was brought up uh, to them I brought it up to them they got upset but facts are facts we bless waters with the Holy Cross and through prayer they take last year's water and they just dilute it with with the new with the new water that they brought there's nothing holy there there's nothing holy there having said all of that having said all of that I will turn a page and explain why our hierarchy is canonical and true on a separate session I will go into very detail of why the church is going to be alive until the end of times and it will be with priesthood and is going to have holy communion through the end of times but right now I just want to touch very lightly on the canonicity Kanana, Kanana that our church is the one holy catholic and apostolic church from the apostolic times until this day we're called the orthodox church even though like we're of russian descent but there are so many orthodox uh, churches around the world there's a greek orthodox church there's um uh, antiochian uh, Greek I mean hey do you guys even know that there is an Orthodox Church in, in Japan what? yes uh, if you guys find the time uh, go on YouTube and just punch in J Japanese Orthodox Church 
and they have their own bishops, they have their own priests, deacons, and uh, uh, I, I enjoyed listening to them to sing Christos was crazy in their own native language. So, I mean, in your free time, take the time to uh, just uh, download the Japanese Orthodox Church and uh, you will see that even uh, uh, even Japan has an Orthodox Church. I don't see why the priests don't have an Orthodox Church. But uh, going back, so there's so many Orthodox Churches, but I'm going to concentrate on the Greek Orthodox Church is because that's where Mitropolit Ambrosi came. He was joined to, uh, to our church in 1946. Well, I mean, uh, yes, sorry, thank you. Uh, that's good. Oh, this was not very recent. That means you guys are listening. That means you guys are listening. Good, 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 good. I thought I was putting you to sleep. Yeah, yeah, it is 1846, sorry. So, um, Today, the Greek church is split up into so many jurisdictions. There's the, in America, there's the OCA, uh, the Greek Archdiocese, there's the Old Calendras, uh, and there's so many splits that happened uh, in the 1900s, or the, last, or the last century that happened in the Greek Orthodox Church, that yes, today they are split up. But in uh, 1846, it was one church. And the Greek Orthodox Church never, never practiced uh, baptism by, by pouring or by sprinkling. As a matter of fact, right here in Northern California, Ethnic California, there's a monastery there with the Greek uh, Old Calendras Church that uh, uh, my younger brother, as you say, he went there to uh, spend some time there, and that's, what he, that's where he learned uh, iconography. And I visited there a lot of times. And uh, the Archbishop there, Christos Thomas, uh, we talked at length. We, uh, we were still Bispo Hotz at that time. And um, he was willing to ordain um, priests for us and set up a, a hierarchy for us. But we, we say that we have uh, our uh, metropolia in Romania, and uh, he was very uh, he's, uh, he was very uh, knowledgeable knowledgeable about it. And he goes, well, he goes, do you guys received uh, canonicity? from Mitropolit Ambrosi, who was our Iraq. Uh, he was uh, the uh, Greek uh, uh, metropolitan. He goes, we still pray for him that he has passed away. He is in, that he is in, uh, uh, in their synagogue. But uh, we all, uh, we, uh, our minds were all already made up that we were gonna go uh, there and get ordination there. Uh, but, uh, they are very, very strict about or, uh, or about um, baptism. Of course, this is the one thing that ha that has been uh, a great slander on our church way from the beginning, starting with uh, 1846 when Metropolitan Bishop joined uh, the, uh, our old believer Orthodox Church. That was the number one thing that the Bishop uh, started to spew out and slander. Mitropolitan Bruce said that he was a Bilibanit, and he is not. Uh, we, uh, God willing, I, uh, I'm going to go to the historical facts with the historical uh, canonicity and uh, writers that have went there to Greece and witnessed the, how they were, uh, they were baptizing in three full immersions. So, uh, Mitropolit Ambrosi was, uh, came from the Greek Orthodox Church to, to the Old Believers. Uh, there's canons in the Holy Corinthia, Canon 8 of the uh, First Ecumenical Council, 
uh, Canon 95 of the Sixth Ecumenical Council, uh, the first, the first parable of uh, Basil the Great, where uh, he explains very much how her uh, heretics are divided up. The priestess, they have a m uh, mentality that as soon as, you, as, you, as soon as you say heretic, they, they don't look at different levels of heresy. But they look at it straight that uh, since he's a her heretic, that's where they get their uh, blasphemy and their slander that our church is from Antichrist, just because of this. And um, whoever is on Facebook, they can uh, they can uh, they can find this uh, what they are saying. No, our church is not from Antichrist. Uh, our church comes from apostolic succession. Apostolic succession. That's where it comes from. And so, yes, Mitrovic Ambrosi was accepted into our church by. Uh, the second level of heresy. That, was, that means that he was chrismated uh, after confessions. He was chrismated and he was accepted into the church in his full rank as a as a uh, hierarch, hierarch, and his rank was metropolitan at that time. So that's why we have uh, a metropolitan in our church as a head, a head, a head of the church. Ever since his joining to the church. The priestess have been continually slandering and slandering and slandering. When we joined the church in 18, no, not 18, 1984, <laughs> I almost went back a whole big century, way back. <laughs> 300 years old. Man, we look good for 300 years old. Right. Oh, no, uh, uh, 1984, when we joined the church, some of them claim that they have rebuttaled all the all of our uh, all of our sayings and mistakes that they have written something to to prove us wrong that we were wrong. No, 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 no. The slander, the persecution, the shunning that we got at that time. This was a sorry thing that there were not uh, any uh, hate laws at that time because if there was hate laws at that time. A lot of them would have been uh, in jail or in prison because of federal hate crimes. Um, we drove right through here, right uh, through uh, Bethlehem Drive, and we were uh, passing by the Ahans place. Uh, one of the two things would happen. Your, your vehicle would either get egged or rocks be thrown at you. When we built our church, in, within the six months, uh, we had four broken windows. Four broken windows and they were from the AM side. Uh, as a matter of fact, our first uh, insurance company, they kicked us out. is because of the liability of our church being there. They tried to burn our church. Here, by the AHANS, we would either get aid or rocks. And at the end of the village, Zarkov would be out there with the old man, uh, Zarkov on one side of the road, the other, uh, on their side, um, old man Ahan, they would be spitting. They would be spitting at us. And now, that generation, the generation of 1985, the children of today's generation are the children, no, no, the children of this generation, that was their fathers and mothers that were, that were doing. Today, of course, some of them have softened up and being more friendlier. But all of their minds are poisoned by, by their parents and mothers, by their fathers and mo mothers of, uh, what our church stands for. They don't believe that we are Orthodox. They believe that uh, we are a synagogue or a mosque or whatever, whatever. We got called so many names. Oh, and another thing that I want to touch up on 
they called us communists. Because the way uh, we got our ordination from Romania, at that time it was a communist country. And believe me, I always say this, after we first moved in, moved in into this uh, to, to church to pray, because we were, at that time, we were praying over Gregory uh, Nokomukov's place. Soon as we moved in, yes, uh, it was during a weekend, FBI came in. And uh, I was home at that time. My dad was home because he was a priest there at that time. And um, they asked for the keys for, to the church. And uh, that gave him the keys. And they told him to stand outside. They went in there with, the, with their electronics and walked through the whole church, upside, I mean, upstairs and downstairs, every, uh, every corner, every uh, tranny. They, they, they walked through with electronics to see if we had anything, anything. Of course, it was my da dad's duty to tell him not to touch the holy altar or the holy table in the Zerfinik, but uh, you know, hey, they're the law. If they want to touch it, they touch it, and they did. So we had to replace the, uh, the church again. And a couple of years later, same thing happened. They came to check our church to see that if we are, uh, that if we are communists and that we're sending messages or whatever, whatever, whatever we were slandered of. So the children of today's generation, they, should, they need to know what their parents did to us. And they, you know, they think that, uh, that uh, how one of them put it out, that they prayed and that they talked to us softly and that they uh, uh, had good conversations with us. Ah. Uh, if, any, if, if anybody doesn't know what was, what was persecution, that was persecution at that time. Next Sunday, because next, uh, hopefully next Sunday, I'm going to go into what is the church and how the church and the priesthood are tied so close together and what the teachings of the fathers of the church uh, teach us that church and priesthood are going to be together and Holy Communion till the end of times. Because the priestless, they say that there is no more church, there's no more communion, uh, but they now have their water instead of communion. That is a false teaching. They, they don't believe in their God when he tells them that the, the, the gates of hell will not prevail over the church. Yet, they acknowledge that, that, that the Lord said this, but then they always go, but because of our circumstances, you know, well, what are your circumstances? You know, stop being ignorant and, uh, and um, bow your head down and bow your knees down before God and before a bishop. That is, in the beginning of the 1800s or the 1700s, the reason why this uh, the Bispokotsu started was because the leaders of their faiths at that time, <clears throat> they were power hungry and they did not want to be uh, subject to a bishop because a bishop carries authority and spiritual authority. Where, like even today themselves, uh, uh, you know, Hadabit, he's nobody but like simple Joe, uh, simple Joe out there but they act like they're bishops, and they, uh, you know, sometimes you hear horror stories of what they do to their parishioners. Uh, and that's exactly the way they like it. So, you know, they're not gonna bow, bow their heads down before, before a bishop, or be, but you know, the episcopo. Они сами епископы, за чё им кланяться или подчиняться кому-то другому? That is the biggest, that's their biggest problem. That is their biggest problem. So, uh, next Sunday we will have another good presentation also. But with this, I leave everybody with God's peace.